and make some noise in the house of God. Give God some praise right now. Come on, let's lift him up a little bit, God. We invite you to fill this place with your presence. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love your presence, Jesus. We love your presence. the lyrics of this song, do what only you can do with one word, the mountains move. We serve a great God. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. At this time, if you have a need in the house, we'd like to take this opportunity to pray for you. If you're joining us online, we, first of all, we are so excited to have you with us. If you have a need online, amen, amen. If you have a need online, you can go ahead and put your comments, uh, uh, put your prayer request in the comments. We have people standing by right now that would love to pray for you. Why don't we just lift our hands together right now tonight. God, we thank you so much. God, we are so blessed with this opportunity to gather together in your presence. God, and we place each and every need, every situation, every burden, God, everything that, that we're carrying on us that's weighing us down. God, we lay it at your feet, God. And we ask that you would have your way in this service, have your way in our lives, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Come on, let's give him a little bit of praise. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every gesture of your hand, waves 
for meeting us here. God, we thank you for loving us in spite of our failures, and in spite of our, our faults. There's nobody greater than you. 
There's none that even compare, God. You are awesome. You are holy. You are worthy. Come on, somebody, just exalt him a little bit tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you know it, can you sing it with us a little bit? Hallelujah. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. The heavens are ten.
together one time we sing. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Come on, let's just let that continue to flow. Begin to worship him. How great is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His greatness is beyond bounds. Just love on him just for a moment. Remind him that you, that you know how great he is. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and mercy, for the power of the Holy Ghost in this room right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can't tell you how excited I am about tonight. It's, there's going to be revelation in this house tonight. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a word in this house tonight. It's going it's to it's touch lives today. For those of you online, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited that you're here. I can't wait to hear what the word is about to bring. Brother Victor Jackson is just, from the moment he's walked in this door today, he's been preaching right over here on the side, and it's been powerful. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's just been, he's been flowing, flowing. Many of you don't know, uh, he's actually been here since, since Monday, and he's been preaching every night here since Monday. Of course, many of y'all don't know what, what I'm talking about, but uh, every year, the Louisiana District does a, does a, a series of camps in Tioga, and, and um, it's always a big deal. It's a, it's a great thing. They always bring in the best speakers of our generation. We're looking at one right there, and Brother Victor Jackson. And this year, with COVID-19, it, it, it didn't get to happen like they wanted to, and so uh, they chose to use our church as a recording for a virtual camp that's going to be airing Thursday and Friday night, and we recorded it on Monday and Tuesday night here in this room. Looked a lot different. We had all the chairs out. We were in the center with all kinds of cameras around. It was great. But I'd, I'd encourage you this Thursday and Friday night, I'm already reaping the benefit and the blessing of what I heard on two nights in a row. You get to do this Thursday and Friday. So I encourage you, get on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be sharing it from our page, of course, too. But you can go to LDYM's uh, social media and, and connect directly, and you'll be hearing some phenomenal preaching there. But he's about to continue that same level of anointing in this room for you and for you online directly to our church. And I can't, can't wait to hear that. I want to remind every single one of you, if you would like to join in with us in, in giving and supporting his ministry, supporting this church, you can always download the app, point.church, or go to point.church, www.point.church. You can give online there. You can also give in our kiosk and, and in, our, uh, in our different stations in the back. So we encourage you to, to join in with that. But with that being said, I just, I hope you're excited as I am. This is, it's just about to be amazing. And I appreciate the worship team. I, I believe God is about to do something great. Brother Jackson was talking to me a little bit before, and he, he did mention that, you know, he's, his goal is to get into the Word and do some just, just, just breaking it apart and just really, really getting some substance out there. So we're going to play the end by ear. I know with, with COVID, our altar calls are a little different. I can guarantee you there will be prayer. <laughs> we will be praying for God to, 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 to speak into your life and touch your, your, your needs, but we may not be at the front tonight, so we'll just play that by your own line. Wherever you are, whatever space you're in, I'm encouraging you, put down the distractions. Get yourself locked into what's about to happen. It's going to be amazing. God is going to do something awesome here tonight. So thank each and every one of y'all. Before he comes, can we one more time pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless this service. Bless every single one of our hearts, our minds, that we can take in what this is. Lord, let this be a continuation of the life-changing messages that have been going forth over the last few weeks. God, let us, let us hear this and walk away. We are, we are destined and we are po poised for greater things to happen. And Lord, let it continue building us into this moment, God, that we can be ready for what you have to do in our hearts and in our minds and in this community and in this area. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. Can you give my friend, Brother Victor Jackson, a hand as he comes? Can you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Praise God. The presence of God is in this place and uh, a lot of hard work that has gone into uh, setting this building back up. It looked completely different yesterday uh, afternoon. Wow, the hard work that went into putting on this camp. 
uh, all the volunteers from this church. They had the they had the drums down there. They had I mean it was crazy. I don't even know how y'all did it, uh, but appreciate all the hard work of this local church. All the uh, all the volunteers, all the hard workers, the media team, the sound team, uh, the videographers. Give honor to all of you. Uh, Pastor Pavlou and his wife, we love and appreciate them and their leadership uh, in this church. We have enjoyed the fellowship. Appreciate so much the spirit of excellence that is upon them and upon this church. Appreciate so much Bishop Pavlou and his wife. I give honor to them. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of appreciation for your leadership? And... Uh, and uh, we just had an amazing time. Um, give honor to my beautiful wife, Louisa, and my son, James Asher. So thankful for them. And uh, I'm just excited to get into the Word of God. Amen. God is doing something special in the middle of everything going on. And I'm excited to get into the Scriptures and see what He has for us. Uh, why don't we open up our Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, um, chapter 2. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Appreciate so much uh, the volunteers that have uh, put meals together this week. I had some jambalaya yesterday. Come on, somebody. Hey, don't make me start preaching in here. Had some boudin balls. Anybody feel a witness there? Come on now. And uh, I was telling pastor, and I just... This may be some commentary. I can't prove this in the scripture, but I will say that I tell people that people that fast one day in Louisiana, somehow in heaven, that is equivalent to a 21-day fast. The level of discipline you have to have to say no to gumbo. Come on, somebody. Help me, Holy Ghost. To say no to jump. So when I fast, I always schedule around Louisiana. Amen. Never. <laughs> Before and after. You know, when the Lord's dealing with me, it's time to get on the fast. I look at my calendar. I'm like, okay. Before Louisiana. All right. After Louisiana. Louisiana food's like my reward. Amen. And so uh, just the best food in the world, in my opinion. Luke chapter 2, verse 41, if you have it, say amen. amen. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk. Aren't you thankful the Bible got some country words in there somewhere? Sought him among the kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him, and the temple sitting in the midst of doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Last scripture, verse 50 and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. I want to talk to you on this subject this evening, holding on in uncertain times. Holding on in uncertain times. Um, why don't you clap your hands to the Lord where you are. Praise God. Bless your word. Minister to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Somebody shout yes. yes. Holding on in uncertain times. 
the life of Mary is very interesting. It's interesting because her life can never be replicated. Um, man, I feel like preaching already. Um, you know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that there's nothing new under the sun. Anyone ever heard that scripture? There's nothing new under the sun. And anytime people want to be provoked, like you try to provoke want someone to go to a new dimension, sometimes they like to have that as like their comfort base. Hey, bro, there's nothing new under the sun. But I remind you that that was written before the virgin birth. I'm getting in heavy already. There's nothing new under the sun, yet something happened new in the life of Mary. A virgin birth. Pregnant with child of the Holy Ghost. See, there's nothing new under the sun until the spirit gets involved. And when the spirit gets involved, it has the ability to do things nobody's ever seen before. Amen. Amen. Mary was entrusted with something not once in a lifetime, something once in time. Now, it's one thing to be trusted with something that happens once in a lifetime. It's another thing to be trusted with something to happen once in time. And I would say it's tougher to have something in your womb that's never happened before than to have something in your womb, come on somebody, that you have a blueprint on how to raise and live out. If Mary were to speak tonight, she would say, now it's one thing to trust God, but it's another thing to be trusted with God. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Nobody can relate to that. She, she had no one to relate to, to have that type of opportunity from an angel to say, hey, God wants to come through your loins. Um, and Mary said, this angel said, hey, you're favored and you're blessed. We want, you know, the, the Holy Ghost. You're going to be pregnant with child of the Holy Ghost. And Mary says, how can this be seeing I know not a man? And the angel said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. You don't have to understand it. And, and, it's, and it's interesting because when he said she, she, that she couldn't relate to the Jewish customs of the past and she couldn't relate to anyone in the future, she was trusted with something from God that she had to be overshadowed and hear the whisper of the Spirit on how to handle the prophetic gift that was placed in her bosom. Sometime, what if I told you God wanted to do something in you that has never happened before and can never happen again? What if God wanted to do something in this church that you can't even look back and compare it to anything? And you can't even look around you for help. But the only way that you're going to get through it and learn how to handle it is that you hear the whisper of the Spirit directing every step in your life. Amen. Amen. He said, how can this be seeing I know not a man? The power of the highest shall overshadow you. And when she didn't understand it, you know what she said? Be it unto me. According to thy word. Listen, Mary received in her spirit what her mind couldn't comprehend. See, there's some things, see, there's some people that disqualify themselves from promises because you want to figure everything out. 
God's like, I want to do this, ain't you? Now, now I need the five-year. Uh, you need to show me the top of the stairway in before I take the first. And they disqualify themselves because you try to figure everything out first. But sometimes you can receive something in your spirit that your mind can't comprehend. And you have to act on what's in your spirit. And over time, the mind will catch up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, Lord. See, you could be in the middle. You could have lost your job and the Holy Ghost could speak to you that this could be your most prosperous year of your life. And looking at it logistically, you look at it like I don't have any money. I lost everything. I've been considered not essential on my work. But when you get it in your spirit, you're going to say yes and amen. Be it unto me according to that. Come on. God could say 2020. He could send a revival into your home and into this church. How can we do that when the building's been closed? Come on, somebody. You don't have to understand it. You just got to say yes, amen, let it be. Oh. Amen. Some of y'all just got to say yes to it. Amen. Don't, don't let what you know prevent you from what you could be. And don't let what you know about your past and your history prevent you from what God is trying to deposit into your future. Stop reminding God about all your failures of yesterday and just say, be it unto me according to your word. Do what you want to do in me. Do what you want to do in my marriage. Do what you want to do in my family. Be it. <laughs> Oh, somebody clap your hands. I feel the Holy Ghost. Her one responsibility was to say yes. You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to figure out how it's all going to happen. Just say yes. Amen. Amen. Abraham hadn't accomplished anything for God yet, but the Bible says that he believed the Lord, and because he believed the Lord, God gave him righteousness, imputed righteousness to him. He hadn't done anything great yet. He hadn't done anything powerful yet, yet he just believed. And because he believed, God said, I'm giving you some righteousness. Some of you just need to believe that God wants to do something in your world. And he will empower you to take the right steps to get it done. She said, be it unto me. She said, yes. But she said, yes. And she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. She's pregnant. And I don't think Mary understood. Watch this how much pain was tied to her yes. Oh, Lord. I think if the angel would have showed her the next 33 years, she'd have probably been like, no. See, see there's some stuff God's hiding from you. Come on, somebody. Come on. He said, because you got to just believe the promise because your belief in the promise is going to help you sustain the process and the pain that it takes to birth the promise. She has this incredible son. And when she has him, she cannot have him in the end. There's no room for her in the end. There's no room for them. I could break that text down. I don't have time to break it down. I'm trying to get somewhere. But already she's suffering rejection before Jesus is born. They are considering him illegitimate already. She is considered an adulteress. She is considered a fornicator. No one believes the report of an angel that 
God, she was pregnant with God. And it's amazing that when people around you don't understand what God's trying to do in you, the first thing people around you will start saying is that it's illegitimate. Something's not right with that anointing. They operate in too much anointing in church point. Something's off. It's too good to believe. And they can't figure out why God's blessing is here. Until they get in the spirit. And when Jesus is born, it's amazing all the activity that takes place after he's born. Joseph is having dreams. The wise men from the east come to worship him. The shepherds come to the house. They come and give gifts. These are all confirmations of what the angel spoke to Mary. He goes to the temple to get circumcised. Anna is, is there and she, she worships the baby. Simeon is there, another, another elder. He comes to worship the baby. He Joseph is having two or three dreams, having dream after dream. It's a fresh confirmation of everything God was saying. The devil was even stirred up because Herod begins to want to destroy. He kills the children in Bethlehem that are two years and younger. There was a whole lot of confirmation after the promise was given. When God gives a promise, there is confirmation that comes. It's amazing you could be in an altar and God give you something and you have no evidence of it working out but you feel a witness in your spirit you feel a confirmation you go to the store they look at you and say man there's a blessing on you what church do you go to you walk different you talk different there's a fresh oil on your life everywhere you go there's confirmation when God gives you a promise your family members looking at you different they say come on that depression is lifted off of you what happened and you're saying well God gave me a promise huh, that he's going to turn some things around huh, and I felt the witness in my spirit amen and it's a wonderful thing when those confirmations come of what God is going to do but nobody talks about the space listen the space between Jesus at two years old to my text here in verse 41 of Luke chapter 2, where Jesus is now 12 years old. A 10-year gap. Come on, Holy Ghost. Of nothing happening. 10 years of silence from heaven. 10 years of no angels showing up to give you confirmation. Ten years of no more priests, no more people from the east coming to give you any confirmation. Ten years of silence and Mary is looking at Jesus, expecting him to be different from the other kids. But he looks just like everybody else. His nose is running just like the other kids. He's running and falling and scratching his knee just like the other kids. And she's scratching her head. Hold on, is this not supposed to be God? You know, Jesus easily at six years old, whenever the rabbis were teaching him, Jesus could have easily said at six years old, actually, that's not what I meant when I wrote that. And you're dealing with an insecurity issue. I dealt with this with your great-great-grandfather. And they're trying to instruct him about the word that he is. Y'all going to throw me out of here. <laughs> Actually, you're interpreting that text wrong. But he's not saying anything. 
He looks like everyone else. He looks common. And 10 years, he's blending in with all the other kids. And when you've been waiting on a promise to manifest itself, and 10 years, it looks normal, the doubt begins to creep in. And the discouragement begins to creep in. And the thoughts come, was this just me and emotionalism? Was it just me getting too riled up, too ambitious? And after 10 years of nothing happening, these wonderful people, Mary and Joseph, listen, they are, verse 41, you can follow me there. Now they went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. Listen to this. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when he, they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Here it is. Who goes a whole day not recognizing they've lost their child? Are you, are you getting it? That's like you going to Walmart, got your child with you, got my son James Asher with me, take him to Walmart. He's walking with me with Walmart. I go to the cash register. I look behind. He's gone. I don't notice. I pay for whatever I bought. I get in my car, look at his empty car seat. Don't notice he's gone. Drive home. Go to church service. Have good church. Just me and my wife. Don't notice my son's not there. Go back home. Lay down. Look at his empty room. Don't notice he's not there. And for an entire day, all of a sudden they go, oh, where, where little man at? <laughs> Jesus had become so common. Because if they still believe that he was who he was supposed to be. I'm keeping him as close to me as I can everywhere I go because I got to protect God's investment. But it, he became casual. The Bible says they knew not of it, but they supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey Supposing, that word literally means that, that the custom was he never traveled with Mary and Joseph. He always traveled among the other stuff. He always traveled with the company. They would travel in companies. And the leader of the company and that their family, they would lead out front. But Jesus wasn't even with Mary and Joseph. He was among the stuff. And listen, in the process of faithfulness, hear me, they lost the promise. They were faithfully showing up to Jerusalem every year. Faithfully giving their tithes, giving their offering, faithful people, faithful people showing up, but in the process of faithfulness and their promise not being manifested, all of a sudden they lost the promise. They were still being faithful, but they lost the sparkle in their eye because they stopped believing that God was going to do what He said He was going to do. 
Still showing up, still lifting the hands, still going through the ritual, still doing what you know to do that's right. I'm looking at faithful people here. I'm preaching to faithful people online. But in the process of time of faithfulness, you began to stop believing somewhere that God can bring your backslidden boy home. Somewhere you stop believing that God can bring back your backslidden daughter. Somewhere you stop believing that there can be some something special that arises uh, out of your pain and out of your loneliness uh, and out of your suffering uh, and you still show up uh, but somewhere you stop believing uh, that there is still a promise that God could, could fulfill in your life they were still being faithful but because no evidence that the promise was coming to pass they just started pushing it among the stuff and it got lost while being faithful. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, there's some things that you've given up on. Come on, Holy, because you've been waiting a while. There's some people listening that there's some callings that God gave you that you gave up on. Because 10 years you didn't get any results. Nobody gave you confirmation. Come on, Holy Ghost. No one told you that God's hand was on your life. And you were waiting for some type of affirmation. Come on, Holy Ghost. And it didn't come. So you began to think, I guess it's a figment of my imagination. No, the promise is still alive. You just got to learn to hold on to it at uncertain times. You got to learn to hold on to it when nobody else sees the potential. When everybody else has given up on it. You got to get a conviction that God spoke to me and he said it's going I don't care if their baby on drugs God said he's still going to save them I don't care if they've never come into the sanctuary God said he's still going to use oh Lord oh, hallelujah 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 Jesus they were being faithful uh, while the promise was being buried uh, while they were being faithful. Uh, kept showing up. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, kept being involved. Uh, kept volunteering. Uh, but their, the spark was gone. Uh, that thing that made them tick. Uh, that thing that got them up in the morning believing uh, that this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, that sparkle, that energy uh, that used to fuel them every time they woke up and went to church and it was gone because they've been waiting for so long and nothing happened they lost the promise they lost the promise they lost it now now when people even bring it up Hey, didn't you, years ago, didn't you believe that? Or a prophecy comes forth from the pulpit. Prophecies now make you more frustrated. They, they used to get you, uh, they used to get you excited. But now, when they say, God's going to do this, you, you just get a little agitated. Uh. Don't, don't talk about the promise, preacher. No, I, I buried that a long time ago. Don't, don't disappoint me again. Come on, Holy God. People are afraid to believe in the promise again because they're afraid of getting disappointed again. And it's easier to give up on it than to wait on it. They knew not of it. They went a day's journey not knowing that the promise was gone, that it was lost. And the Bible says they sought him among their kinfolk. You see, when you lose your promise, <laughs> you start looking at brothers and sisters in the church to see if they have a word of confirmation, if they have your promise. Start looking for the word of confirmation. You go up to your brother and says, hey, you, you got a word for me? And they're like, look, man, I'm dealing with my own stuff. I ain't got no. <laughs> I 
Well, what about you? you? You got a word for me? I'm busy. Like I, I saw them among the kinfolk, saw the promise among the kinfolk. The brothers and sisters couldn't find them. So when the kinfolk didn't have it, they went to the acquaintance. That's the, that's the guest. That's the new convert. Go up to the guest in church. And the guest, they're just, they're just. And so you kind of go over to them. <laughs> hey, bro. You have my promise? <laughs> and they're like, no. No, no confirmation from the brothers and sisters. No confirmation from the fresh energy of the new converts or the guests. And so the Bible says when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. When you can't find your promise, you have to go back to the place that you lost it. When did you lose it? Was it when you went through that divorce? When, 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 when you got to go back to the place and visit that place? When did you lose it? Was it when you struggled with bitterness and unforgiveness? Where did you lose the promise? You got to go back to that place to find where you buried it and begin to go back and get it. Where did you lose it? Was it when you went through that trial? Was it that 10 year ago trial? Come on, somebody. Was it when family rejected you? It was it when nobody but where, where did you lose the promise? You got to go back to that place and say, I'm getting it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. They turned back again. Listen. And it came to pass that after three days of searching, they found him in the temple. Sitting in the midst of doctors, hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him, listen, were astonished at his understanding and answers. So the same promise that they looked at as common, everybody else was amazed by. Hmm. For you to still hold on to a promise after all that you've been through, for you is just normal. But for everybody else looking at you, they're amazed that you still hold on to a promise. promise that they had come on put it among the stuff the whole world was sitting down watching it listen and when they saw him verse 48 when they saw him they were amazed he was so common to them the promise had become so common that when they saw the promise operating, that, oh, God, that's pretty good. Listen, and what I am preaching to you tonight, listen, is not conjecture or hypothesis or an opinion. I'm going to show you in this text that every word that I said tonight is not something in my imagination, but it is completely fact in the word of God. The Bible says, when they saw him, they were amazed. Listen, and his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou dealt with us? Look what she says. Behold, your father and I have sought you. Mary called Joseph Jesus' daddy. 
And the only time people called Joseph Jesus daddy was in as a sign of unbelief. For Luke, for Luke states, Luke 4, 22 states, is not this Joseph's son? John 6, 42 states, is not this the carpenter's son? He's an illegitimate. Anytime someone called Joseph Jesus' dad, it was always a sign of unbelief in his ministry. But now the miracle, the person that God used to bring forth the miracle, now she's calling Joseph Jesus' dad. Your father and I sought you. Somehow, in the years of waiting, 10 years of nothing happened. She got so discouraged that she began to doubt the angelic visitation. Y'all better hear me. She began to doubt. She thought it was a figment of her imagination. She would see when you hold on to a promise for a while and you give up in it, you begin to abort it through logic. You begin to say, it was just me. I didn't eat that day when God gave me the promise. Come on, somebody. I was going through a rough time when I when I went through that pain. Your father and I sought you. And even all throughout the scripture says Joseph and his mother. Joseph and his mother. Never called it Jesus' father. Even one text says that Joseph, his dad, according to what they thought. And look, she was so discouraged. She said, your father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Listen, verse 49, here it is. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business. You know what Jesus was saying? Joseph is not my daddy. You know what he was saying? The promise is still alive. I know you've been waiting. I know it's been 10 years, but I will not accept Joseph as my father. I'm about my heavenly father's business and everything God spoke to you is not a lie. It is the truth. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. So. Oh, Come on, somebody clap your hands if you're starting to believe again. Come on, somebody clap your hands if you're starting to believe again. Hey! Hallelujah. So I will not accept the narrative of discouragement. Say, your dad and I said, no. I'm about my father's business. You know he's not my dad. But you were discouraged, so you tried to put that on me. But, but I'm about my father's business. The miracle is still alive. I know you've been waiting for 10 years for some confirmation, for some sign uh, that I wasn't done working. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, but it's still alive. Uh, every word God told you is still alive. Uh, God would not lie to you. Uh, God would not tease you. Come on. Uh, he says, so shall my word be. Uh, it cometh forth out of my mouth. Uh, it shall not return unto me void, uh, but it shall prosper in the thing whereto I have sent it. Uh, come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, and it shall accomplish that which I please. Come on, Holy Ghost. I'm not giving you a word just to give you a goosebump and make you feel some type of emotion. God said, if I said it, I'm going to do it. Abraham, I don't care if you've been waiting for 25 years. I still want to give you a promise, son. I don't care how long you've been waiting, Joseph. It may have been 13 years, but there's still a miracle coming forth. There's still something that's going to happen. Oh, 
Hallelujah. It's still alive. It's still alive. It may have had to go into a pit for a season, but it's alive. It may have had to go into Potiphar's house for a season, but it's alive. It may have to go into a little prison for a while, but it's alive. It may have had, come on, it may have had to hide in the cave of Dulem for a while, but there's a king that's still alive. Every word that God said, it is still true and alive. Oh, hallelujah. My father's business. <laughs> oh, my father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, every time you want to give up on the promise, God gives you another glimpse that the promise is still beating. Every time you say, I'm going to give up on this thing, that promise just speaks up and says, don't you let go of me yet. I still got a plan for you. Come on, somebody. Every time you try to think that your backslidden son is never coming home, they begin to send you a text message asking you about God. Every time you almost give up, the promise just starts speaking up and say, don't you let go of me yet. There is still a word for you. Uh, There is still an anointing for you. Oh God. Oh somebody needs to clap their hands a little. Somebody needs to give the Lord a praise break. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. And that's one of the frustrating things because even when you want to let it go, you know you can't let it go. Even though you want to stop believing, you know you can't stop believing because the word was so sure in your spirit. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody lift up those hands right now and tell the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Come on, somebody lift up your hands right now and say, Lord, let it be, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Let it be even when I don't feel it, let it be. Even when I don't see it, let it be. Even though I feel discouraged, let it be. Even though I almost gave up on it, let it be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God. Come on, the Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody right now. Come on, just hold on in the middle of uncertain times. Hold on in the middle of 2020. Hold on in the middle of all the trials of 2020. There's one thing I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go to the word that God spoke to me. And he said he was going to do something in my life. He said he was going to do something in my family. Come on, you need to get the sparkle back in your eye. Come on, it's time for you to stand on your feet again. It's time for you to get your smile back again. I need somebody to stand on their feet for a moment and begin to throw their hands up and open their mouth and give glory to God and say I still believe Shaba etalakaya olomohosataya ha alabohosha I hear the Lord say, he said, Victor, there's some people here that they've been so broken over the past few years and had so many of their dreams crushed that it almost hurts them to believe. It's been tough for you to lift up your hands in this service because it hurts you to believe. It hurts you to go back to Jerusalem and find the place you gave up on it. It hurts you to lift up your hands. It's tough for you to smile. Some of y'all been frowning this whole time because you you hear the promise whispering to you, don't you give up on me. And it hurts you to say, God, I believe again. But God would not lie to you. I said he wants to do it. I said he will do it. 
I said he's not done doing it. Oh, oh God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, Lord. I have so much more to say. But I want you to find somebody near you. Find a family member near you. If you're by family, get near them. If nobody's by you, you just lift up those hands where you are. And I want you to pray that God would revive the promise that you gave up on. Your dream is not dead. Your dream is not dead. Come on, throw those hands up. Come on, I know it hurts. It doesn't feel good. But put them hands up anyway. I said, your dream is not dead. I said, God is not done. I said, God's still going to bring a revival. I said, God's still going to manifest his name. I said, God's still going to get glory. I speak the blessing of God on every person that's in this building. I speak the blessing of God on every marriage, on every child, on every young person. Let callings be birthed here. Let promises come alive here. Let the anointing come alive here. God's not done with your kids. God's not done with you. He's still going to bring it to pass. He's still going to open the, the door. Every word he gave you, he shall perform it. He shall perfect that which concerns you. Come on, somebody cry out for a moment. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I feel the glory of the Lord. I feel something beginning to shift in this place. I feel, I feel demons beginning to trip. I feel God taking the scales off of your eyes and causing you to see that the promise is there and it's time to be amazed again. It's time to be amazed again. Come on, he gave you some promises as a teenager. You were curled up in the altar 10 years ago. You were curled up in the altar 20 years ago as you cried and wept believing that God was going to do something in you. But after years have gone on and decades have passed and there's been no manifestation of the promise, you begin to bury the promise beneath your faithfulness, beneath the process of faithfulness. You've begun to hide the promise, but you've still been committed. And I am telling you, your faithfulness has not been in vain. I am telling you, your commitment has not been in vain because it's right here in the temple that you're going to see your promise again and you're going to see it operating in a dimension you never saw it operate in before. Oh, music, musicians could come. I want you to lift up those hands one more time. We're going to worship the Lord. I feel the anointing so heavy. There was somebody that gave up just this year. Some of y'all gave up just last week. Some of y'all in prayer said, God, I'm tired of believing this. I'm tired of holding on to this. But God said, I want you to hold on in uncertain times. Because I got a plan. I don't care what mistakes you've made. He said, I'm still going to keep your daughter. I don't care what type of mistakes you made. I'm still going to keep your son. And I'm going to keep them. Because I still got a 
plan for them. They may be on drugs. They may be drunk right now. They may be doing their own thing right now. But God said, they're not out of my reach. I'm still going to do something in them. And the only reason that they have hope is because they got some parents they won't stop believing. They got some parents that refuse to let go. Come on, they got some siblings that refuse to let go of a belief that God is able. Can you throw your hands up? They're about to worship. They're about to praise God. Can you throw those hands up and close your eyes and make that confession, make that commitment. God, I'm still going to hold on even when there's no evidence, even when there's been barrenness in my life, even though I've been in a dry season, even though I've been in a desert. I'm believing that you're going to see some streams in my desert. I'm believing that you're going to speak to me out of the whirlwind. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name. My 
before we go. Victor Jackson was preaching I could see the moments that God was reigniting promises in each of you it was happening in me it was happening in this church it was happening in each of you online and I want to challenge you when it popped in your mind and you said no that's that's not the one that that's that's not the one no that one it, that's it must be another one he's talking about no it was that one it was that promise that you thought, no, that one is long gone, it's long dead, it's long been in the impossible category. That was God quickening you to say, no, 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 no. That was the one I'm trying to awaken in you. That's the one I'm trying to remind you that I'm not dead. My word does not return void. That's the one. So I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you online if you're still with me. I'm telling you, that's the one. Whatever it is, write it down tonight. Say, this day I have awakened this promise and it will not die again. It will not die again. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in your life. It's going to happen and it's about to happen. God's about to do it. It's, we're right there. God's about to do it in your life. He's about to do it in my life. He's about to do it in this church. 
Thank y'all for showing up. Thank y'all for worshiping. Thank y'all for, for getting behind the word. And thank y'all for letting it go in your heart because I'm telling you, God is about to do what he's promised he's gonna do. Just hold on through these uncertain times. Hold on because this was the awakening moment for you. Believe it. Claim it in Jesus' name. I can't wait to see y'all Sunday. If you can be in the house, be here. If you get, need to stay home, stay home and lock in online. We're about to start a series, God Can, and I'm telling you, it's about to change your life. I believe God is waiting on us to grab hold with faith what he's going to do. The message has been faith for the last few weeks, and it's not about to stop. It's about to increase. I'm telling you, August, I've, I've just God has been working in me. I cannot wait to see what God's going to do. I'll see every one of y'all on Sunday. If you're joining us online, thank y'all for being here. We'll see you next week in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our Point Church worship experience. We believe that the same presence we felt here today is the same presence that filled whatever space you're in. If you had an experience with God, we'd love